First Sip Brew Box is a one-of-a-kind subscription service for craft beer lovers based right here in Pittsburgh. Every month, First Sip will send you a box full of craft beer enthusiast essentials including t-shirts, glassware, and even food. Right now, our friends at First Sip Brew Box have an offer for you. Just sign up for a three-month subscription and get your fourth month free. Just enter the code HOPNATIONUSA when you sign up at FirstSipBrewBox.com. That's H-O-P-U-S-A at checkout to get your fourth month free at FirstSipBrewBox.com. Whoa to you, O Earth and Sea. It's the Hop Nation. USA Podcast. Welcome to episode 72 of the Hop Nation USA podcast. I'm joined here tonight by my co-host Adam. Of course. Steve, how are you on this fine recording episode? I'm all right. That did not seem too confident. You want to try that one again? <laughs> no, I'm good. Oh, all right. That's I'm, all right. Right. I'm all right with my half confidence. Okay, you're just going to roll with it? Yes. All right. All right. That's good. So we're here with another special episode for you. We said that at the end of episode 71. And now it's time to roll into 72, where we are going to actually fulfill that commitment. Yeah. We're actually here in Lawrenceville in a dark and scary basement, and we're joined by the crew from Porter Brewery Tour. Say hi, guys. Introduce yourselves. Hi, guys. Hey. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> and you're hearing the voices of Adam, Johnny, and Hank. That's Adam. I'm Johnny. I'm Hank. That was well done, guys. Thank you. you guys, yeah. You guys yeah. practiced in the parking lot? <laughs> that was <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think they stole that from an old TV show. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello. hello. <laughs> Stooges. <laughs> Damn, we're good. <laughs> and old. <laughs> <you're right. laughs> yes, I think we all, we're all old enough for that joke. So. <laughs> well, look, we're at least 21. Right? That's right, 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 right. Well, we have to be 21 because uh, we're going to be drinking beer on the show tonight. Yeah, that is mm-hmm. correct. And uh, this week's theme is going to be a little tailored towards our friends here at the Porter Brewery Tours. And we're going to be drinking beers from breweries around Pittsburgh that the tours actually visit. Seems a bit apropos. Yeah, yeah. good deal. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, uh, since this is a beer drinking podcast, we do have to get into the first beer. So, Steve, what is the first beer we are drinking tonight? So the first beer we're drinking tonight comes from the ever-loved dancing gnome, the Hype Machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really surprised they don't have a beer that's called that. I'm surprised they're not there yet. We're, yet we're gonna have to. We're gonna <laughs> have to they, listen. They listen. <laughs> you never know. They, they they may pick up this episode and go hype machine. Yeah, mm-hmm. somebody write that down. <laughs> Triple IPA. I can get behind. <laughs> Andrew, it was our idea. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright. Porter <laughs> Tours, 2018. Uh, <laughs> but the one that we're drinking tonight is called the Pounce, and it is just a regular IPA with a six percent ABV. Mm-hmm. It's made with a mosaic and citra hops. And they're used both in pellet and lupulin powder form. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, I guess we should uh, give a little bit of a description of this beer, uh, since we do have it poured in front of us here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can definitely tell that it is a Dancing Gnome style of beer, um, by the sheer fact that uh, clarity is not its forte. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely a, a cloudy beer. Yes. Uh, a hazy beer, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, that's certainly not a bad thing, but that's kind of kind of their signature, I, I would say. Yeah, they, they are the New England. I mean, I think we've said it before, but they're definitely like the Trillium Treehouse of Pittsburgh. Of Pittsburgh, so. <laughs> yes, absolutely. absolutely. Would you guys agree with that? Oh, certainly. 100%. Yeah, although I do have a newsflash on that. Okay. Uh, I talked to Andrew last week, and he had in the fermenter a clear lager. Really? Wow. Yes. Yeah, and it's going to be like very light, 4% ABV. Oh. Like a Bud Light. The, his, he, his words, the Dancing Gnome version of a Bud Light. Hmm. No, I was thinking more right. Crystal Pepsi, but <laughs> see, <laughs> see, I could I could appreciate that being able to step outside of their norm once in a while, right? And being right. able to execute a beer, and I assume they're going to execute it well. I would think, yeah. And you know, Andy, I mean, Andrew was sitting there drinking a Stroh's as he told me this. So. <laughs> you can't hate on Stroh's. No, not at all. It's my youth. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on the nose, really fruity. It is, it is, yeah. and it still has that kind of that hot back to it. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the nose, 
I mean, being that it utilizes blue balloon powder, you can only imagine that it's, you know, dry hopped in that way. Right. And so you're going to get big aroma. Mm. And I'm assuming big taste. Uh, not that it matters, but was there any uh, indication on the IBUs on this beer? No. Okay. <laughs> Again, when we're looking at dry hop beers anymore, I think people just give up and they don't. Right. It's not representative. It, it's a who's line situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the points don't matter. But let's I guess, give it a taste. Yeah. Salute. Mm. To crime. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> Absolutely. So, yeah, I'll be perfectly honest and upfront. I actually had this beer at Beers of the Bird. Oh, it was such a killer. I think it was my favorite one that I had from them that day. Adam, I know you didn't. <laughs> I did not. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, I am not a Dancing Gnome fan. I know that's a bit of a sacrilege, especially in this room. Uh, the reason behind that, for those that are not aware, is because they make a lot of beers that I don't particularly like in terms of the style. I'm not an IPA guy. I'm Neither not am I. Hazy IPA guy. So that's why I was so excited to hear that they're coming out with a, a nice clear lager. Because I I know that these guys have the talent. Oh yeah. But they just haven't getting into my realm yet. So that's something that I'm excited for. That way I can go down there and try something that I know that I like. It's, it's funny. I, I hear that same sentiment echoed by a lot of our guests mm -hmm. when we visit Dancing Gnome. You know, if you're into IPAs and if you're into hops, they're happy. They're in heaven. But not everybody is. Right. And they get there and they'll they'll get the stout or the porter and say, where are we going next? Right. And you find <laughs> that a lot about a lot of the different places that we go. I mean, it's it's never uh, never anything to do with their beer because like you said if you like that you're going to be completely happy right um, but everybody has their own thing in their own palate i'm not an ipa guy but um, i find this just delightful mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it it shows past i've always used the phrase for the style this is a yeah. well-executed beer and this is no exception to that you know what a stout is you right. know what it's supposed to taste like right and this is not like a stout fan Exactly. And, and for this style, uh, this is very true to the style, and I can appreciate what it is. It's just not for me. It's very citrusy for for them, I find. It's not as ipa -y as right. a lot of their others. Right. Yeah, yeah there's, it, there's a lot of fruit in here. Yeah, you're, you, according to their description, you're supposed to be finding notes of orange, pear, and kiwi. Yeah, according definitely. to them. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I get the orange for sure. It has a little bit of that pear dryness. Kiwi, I don't find it, but really, how often do you go looking for it? Right, <laughs> kiwi beer would be right. tough. Unless somebody takes a slice and puts it on the rim of the glass. Unless there's like some fur on the top of the rim. <laughs> <laughs> then you should probably send it back. That's a, that's a whole other show. <laughs> Have you guys tried any of their underscore series, the sour series? No. From I'm, see, them? now I'm not a sour guy. So. Oh. <laughs> have you had it? I am a sour guy, and I have not had it yet. Like the uh, like the jelly? Uh, well, so they just have a whole, the whole underscore series is fruited or unfruited. Mm -hmm. um, and the one that was on when I was there Sunday was uh, unfruited, just a base underscore. Okay. But they've got, like, I think a peach and um, some sort of berry. And it, it, they're sort of like every couple of weeks they come out. And then they're awesome. They're right. really good sour. I can only imagine whatever they're doing is fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Fine, fine work. So good, yeah. And, and for me, if I, I'm ever in the mood for a sour usually and I'm in that area, it's strange roots. That's where I usually go to. I'm a big fan as well. So, but I'm a big sour guy. Right. So you know where to go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can also start going to Grist House now as well because they're with their Kaboom candy right. releases. Right. Uh, full Pine out. as well makes yeah. some, some mm -hmm. strong sours. Yep. Yep. So I think we named four breweries already that are all on <laughs> you guys' tour. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. My, yeah, it's odd how all the all of our favorite beers just happen to be placed <laughs> every, go, yeah. every weekend. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, let's jump right into it, though, and maybe jump back a little. Uh, let's start with how did you guys... You know, come to be a business. There, there's a saying in business that is, don't start a business, find a problem and solve it. Our problem in Pittsburgh is we have too many breweries and not enough time to get to them. But I think you guys are trying to solve that problem. I think that was part of it at the beginning. My brother and I are not necessarily beer guys. We've never brewed ourselves. When we got started, we knew very little about it for the most part. But as you said, um, Sometimes you there's there's that niche that needs to be filled. There's the gap, and there was a gap. And uh, my brother just happens to be very good at finding those types of gaps. <laughs> and Pittsburgh is a very wide open town. I've always said this. Um, I've lived here for about eleven years, and I just find that it's very accepting of good ideas. And if you want it, uh, Pittsburgh is the type of city where you can get it. 
you know, a, a New York, places like that, um, Chicago, so large, so spread out, so many people, so many different ideas that are already being are happening in their own little places. But Pittsburgh still, I think, uh, if you if you got it, you can you can really succeed here. And that's sort of where we started. We saw that niche, and we started going around and and uh, going to different places. We were able to strike up some relationships, and they've ju- it's just blossomed out of there. And and to be honest with you. Most of it is because of the relationships that all of these different breweries have with each other and how supportive they are of each other. Uh, it's, it's a very nice symbiotic thing. We're, we're just bringing people to the, right. to the product. <laughs> you know, we, we don't really, it's, it's not hard to sell beer. No, not at all. No. <laughs> no. Or, or, a, or a beer tour. So we don't have to do a lot of uh, advertising. We, we're the guys that take you to the good beer. Mm. It's you, pretty easy. It, it, you had mentioned earlier how it, it's interesting how all the breweries kind of work together. Um, that's something that we've discovered doing this show. It, it's always funny. You go to one brewery and they'll say, well, we were talking to so-and-so at another brewery. We talking to so-and-so at this brewery. And everybody's kind of echoing the same thing. and always kind of ends up in the same conversation where everybody's working together. And, and I love that you guys are kind of... I, I can't say on the outside because that's Adjacent. not the right way to put it. Yeah, kind of, kind of the Levi Strauss situation. We, we wouldn't want to. Yeah, we wouldn't want to say that we're part of their subculture because they're the ones yeah, that created not. it. Right. But um, but we we help to sort of open that window for everybody else mm-hmm. to sort of get a peek inside. Um, You're the but, facilitators. Uh, yeah, exactly. We're but, enablers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when they when when the different breweries around town have openings. Um, Typically, the people that you see there on day one um, are not the public in general. It's it's other people from breweries around town, right? And they're just there to show their support because if one succeeds, they all succeed, right? And and that's why it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So a rising tide lifts all ships. Yeah, we're just go. we're just happy to be a part of it, and if we've helped it grow in any way, then. All the better. Lots of nodding heads. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, a lot of nodding heads, which is not good for an audio only. (laughs) But uh, I just wanted to uh, jump back to something we were talking with uh, Allegheny City Brewing last week. We're getting into the fact that the the Pittsburgh Brewers Guild is now, you know, up and operational, kind of a full thing. By come August 24th, they're going to have their ale trail maps and up and everything. Has this uh, helped you in any way with your business, knowing that people are now going to be picking, you know, breweries that they can just generate their own tour. Is this going to help you in any way? So I, I, I went to a couple of those meetings at Grist House with the brewers and I spoke with Brian uh, last week. Um, I, I don't see it as adversarial or competitive at all. I mean, if anything, um, it opens up more opportunities for folks to try one route or try one tour or maybe do the Uber route or do the cycling route. And then you have us with the bus. So, I I mean, I really don't see it as any kind of threat. I think it's kind of a cool opportunity to showcase multiple breweries based on kind of what's happening in the city and what kind of vibe you're in. If if you're in a mood to do hazy IPAs, you're probably going to end up at Gnome. But if you want to do something a little bit more diverse, you might end up at Full Pint or at East End. Um, Yeah, I think it's awesome. And it totally is so indicative. It's almost sort of the personification of the Pittsburgh culture working together. We have approximately, what, 30 breweries in the county. Mm -hmm. And I think 20, some of them are part of this brewery guide. Yeah. Um, 24, 25. I think it's 29. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah, yeah, I think it just speaks towards uh, what Johnny said earlier about us kind of riding alongside, you know, what they're doing together. And, and as they grow, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting for us, like I said, to be part of it. But um, as they grow and they get big enough that maybe uh, a bus full of people is more inconvenient than convenient, well, there's so many places popping up. As the need you know, wanes at one place, mm-hmm. we just move over to another. And, and as it continues to grow and grow and grow... We'll go where uh, we'll go where we're needed. Which which brings up an interesting question: uh, Has there been opportunities at breweries outside of the metropolitan area? Like if you get out into say the Butler area or go down to like Yellow Bridge and Delmont, have there been requests to go out that far? Sure, I, I can speak a little bit towards that. I think um, we just we're about to, and forgive me for like saying this if it's premature, but we're about to open up a new route heading westbound. Okay, where we will go to Abjuration in McKee's Rocks. Yes, and we will go to Cobble House in Coriopolis. 
and a third stop to be named. Okay, TBD. Um, yeah, TBD on our end, not on their end. <laughs> but, I, but I imagine uh, it won't take very long for that TBD to pop up. Good. Totally. If it's not open now, it'll, it'll be, be there. there. It'll be there, yeah. <laughs> The feedback that I've heard from a lot of our, our customers has been, you guys should go north. You should hit Shoe Brew. You should hit Reclamation. You should hit Butler County Brew Works, perhaps as far as North Country. So we're, we're playing with those ideas. I know that on our end, Rachel, who handles all of our logistics, planning, website, organizing, has been super critical in kind of helping us sort of form new routes. And we have opened up conversations with folks to the north and fo- folks to the west. The furthest out we go as of today is probably Leaning Cass, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a wonderful place with wonderful people. It's a great place. Um, Awesome. And and, and the the thing about it is really it's not a matter of want. It's it's that we don't feel that that the ride is necessarily as important as the destination. Gotcha. And so if just to have one of those tours, we would we would almost want to start there mm-hmm. so that it wouldn't be about taking a 30 minute ride, going to three places and then taking another ride. Gotcha. The, the whole idea is spend the time at the breweries, drinking, enjoying that vibe. Um, if you like small buses, great. But uh, <laughs> yeah. we, try to, we try to keep the rides as short as possible. Um, at, when possible. Yeah. I mean, just to throw out an idea, there, there's also another uh, brewery up there in that area called Timber Creek that we did an interview with. Yes. It's right next to the Grove City Outlets. Why not take an outlet shopping in brewery? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also uh, there's also Skydive Pittsburgh, yeah. which I'm a big fan of. So we could we could throw that into the yep. mix. Yeah. <laughs> Have some beers and jump out of an airplane. <laughs> it's, it's just a one-way trip. That's <laughs> You mean this plane ain't BYOB? <laughs> Wait, I thought we were supposed to have parachutes. <laughs> yeah, we, we tried something kind of fun back in October where we did take folks from Couch Brewery in Larimer out to the Scare House in Etna. Oh, and that, that was pretty oh, fun. Cool, it was yeah. sort of a Halloween, October theme. We ran it a couple of times on a couple of Thursday evenings where you'd pay a set amount, get a beer at Couch, hop on our bus, go to Etna, do the Scare House, come back to Couch, have a beer, and that will be your experience. That's awesome. Yeah, that is, that is a very so cool. Stuff thing. like that we're always thinking about. Is, do you have any plans for any other, I guess, mixed venue trips? I was going to say we often at this time of year, because we're recording here now, it's August. It's like baseball season. A lot of my tours like to end at Pirates games. I'm not sure if you yeah, guys have found a couple that. Of those. And we go to Boyd and Blair, you know, the, the vodka distillery. Okay. So that that's kind of a mixed venue. Thing. Mm-hmm. I guess that's another thing. Is it just beer or do you guys go into the distillery side of things? Just Boyd and Blair at this point. Okay. Yeah. But if, I mean, as you notice, a lot of the places that we go to also sell other play, other local, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. alcohol. So you right. see the Wiggle Whiskey. Arsenal, right. Arsenal, Arsenal and Apis are usually oh, yeah. on tap yeah. in a lot of places. And, and again, yeah. right like, how wonderful is that? I, right. I remember yeah. the first time I walked into Mindful, uh, as overwhelmed as I was with their, beer, <laughs> their, their collection of beer, which is substantial. Um, the thing that I thought was the, the coolest was that they sold all the local beer. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and, and again, like, they and, didn't and have couch. To. Couch sells local spirits, yeah. local vodka. Right. They don't, and have, to, they don't and... have to do that, but right. they do. They use local uh, coffee in their coffee porters and stouts and things mm-hmm. like that. It's it, it, The partnerships that you see are, are wonderful. And again, it's one of the coolest things about doing this job is uh, all the people that we've met. Right. Just also, they're also <laughs> nice and welcoming. And um, we all have this fun thing in common. Yeah, yeah. Everybody in Pittsburgh's, at least within the craft beer culture, seems to just want to help each other. Right. And yeah, we can speak to that as well. We agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah, we haven't had a bad experience yet uh, with anybody in the Give craft beer time. industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only segment one. <laughs> there are occasions where I'll have a tour where someone is gluten free, or mm-hmm. they want to kind of watch their gluten intake. And the beautiful thing is, so many of these stops have either a cider or a mead or something else, even a spirit on hand uh, to kind of round out that experience. Like we will do our damnedest to make sure that they can get something they can have. Couch is a really good example of one stop that has something for everyone. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's awesome. Yeah. And a couch for everyone. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, it's in the name, you would hope. <laughs> cool. So I, I have a, a similar question what Adam was asking about mixed media venues and expanding, but... Has there ever been a thought to maybe go 
way far, like possibly going to a beer fest in Philadelphia or New York or Columbus, Ohio, taking people from Pittsburgh and like making a weekend trip, like a long trip. We've never talked about it. Okay. And to be honest with you, uh, we've found so much support in this city that we barely advertise ourselves and yet we still are busy every single weekend. Mm -hmm. We almost sort of enjoy the fact that people come here to hang out with us. And so there's almost no need to go out and right. try to bring people. Uh, many, many tours we've had, I'm sure you could say the same thing, guys, is um, Cleveland comes to town for a football game. All of a sudden, that Saturday, I got a bus full of Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. you know, sure. or Cincinnati or something like that. And... Uh, they don't care. I mean, they're in Pittsburgh for the game. Mm -hmm. They want something else to do. They've they've done the inclines. They've done the, they, you know, they've gone downtown. They've seen Station Square. They've gone to the point. They've done all these different things. But all they really want to do is just have fun and drink right. beer. Get into the yeah. actual Pittsburgh. Yeah, and right uh, now, this is what's happening in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And so we're more than happy to uh, escort them around and uh, show them all these excellent things. On, on that note, I have a quick story. Um, one Saturday afternoon this fall, the day before the Patriots played at Heinz Field, I had a tour of seven young guys, uh, three of whom had flown in from uh, somewhere out, like Denver. And one was a Patriots fan, one was a Steelers fan, and one didn't care. <laughs> and then I had another group of four young guys that were all in from Boston, hardcore Patriot fans. Right? And so, so we're driving, driving them around all throughout the day, and we end up at East End, and uh, they're all sitting at the table together, chat, chat, chat. The chainsaw, the bartender at East End, says, hey, you know, there's a whole table full of Patriots fans over there. And I said, yeah, I know. I'm driving them. They said, really? Is there just not a Steelers fan in the whole bunch? I said, well, yeah, there's one. Otherwise, I would have driven this bus off a bridge a long time ago. <laughs> well, and to our credit, there are Steeler bars in every town across oh, yeah. the United States. I mean, good luck not finding one anywhere <laughs> you ever go. Yeah, they're even in enemy territory. Yeah, like you go Dallas. to Baltimore, yeah. there's a Steeler bar <laughs> somewhere being firebombed. <laughs> To, to piggyback off of what Steve said also, I think I know our listeners can't see this right now, but Johnny's wearing a shirt that says drink local. And a big part of Porter and our, our brand and our ethos is to keep it local. And what kind of brought it uh, full circle for me this past weekend, I, I asked, I like to ask our groups, how did you hear about this? And often they'll just Google beer tour mm -hmm. or visit Pittsburgh or tourism or stuff to do. And one lady said, you know, we were about to pull the trigger on a tour with uh, City Brew, but we chose you guys because you're local and we wanted to locally owned company and that just like melted my heart. I was so happy to hear that <laughs> because that was part of I think what Johnny and his brother Andy when they started this was to keep it hyper local. So to go back to your question Steve, I don't think we would go to Erie or the Columbus, Columbus or Cleveland or any of those cities yet because we're trying to keep it hyper local and locally owned and locally operated here in Pittsburgh and all of us live here. Yep. Um, Plus was our idea. We don't want to give them any good ideas. <laughs> right. Come up with it on your own. Buy your own buses. <laughs> and, and as wonderful as our buses are, um, they're not really set for long-term travel. You know, they That's would need that. a little, you know, comfort upgrade. Mm -hmm. but, uh, for what we do, for what yeah. we do, they're perfect. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. I know we just, just. I'm just trying to say a nice way to say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with this summer heat, it's been it gets hot for right. sure. Oh, so yeah. we, we drop the windows. We try to put on AC. We Drive real fast, can. and we yeah. say <laughs> and we say really nice things to them when we start them up. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, sweetie, we can do it today. Nice. Mm, one more tour. One, one more tour. Day. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, hey, that, that makes total sense to me that you guys just want to keep it local. Uh, with as many breweries as we have, there's no need, really, for anybody to want to leave Pittsburgh to go to another place. I mean, if somebody wanted to, they can, but you're not going to find it with Porter, so. <laughs> <laughs> Why leave the party when the party's this good? Right. Yeah, and the party's here. Right. There exactly. you go, Adam. There you go. Cool. Well, I think we're going to come back to this pounce by Dancing Gnome. What are uh, final thoughts on this? Would you like me to go first? I don't care. You go ahead. Yeah. You are I, so committed to that. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say uh, I'm almost finished with this beer, uh, and that's a bit of a compliment in and of itself. Uh, it's not my style, uh, but this is the kind of beer that I could recommend to somebody else that I know would enjoy this style. I would definitely put it on that recommended list. To me, that, that in and of itself is a compliment. I know who would like this, and I know they would like this. All in all, it, it is a good beer. It's just not a beer for me. Cool. 
I'll just say that uh, I'll agree with Adam that yes, I would recommend it to anybody. I'd also recommend it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, take note, self. <laughs> <laughs> Goes in the calendar, <laughs> half a pound. Uh, it's. I, I wouldn't say it's a. I wouldn't say it's a gateway IPA for anybody though. I, I believe it is a little bit more than just like your standard IPA. It's a little bit more than like a regular New England IPA that we've had in right. the past. But it's not a super advanced drinker. But I think a lot of people would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to know what you're getting into yeah. before you drink it. Yeah. I think I would still know, even with my eyes closed, that it was from them, though. Yeah. Yeah. Even it's, with it's the, the, the other <laughs> notes mm -hmm. in it. Right, right. Yeah. 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 It's the kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> it really shines. <laughs> I, I will. I will dream of this beer tonight. I'll leave it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I think what caught me was the aroma, and um, you know, off the off the kind of off the bat, I love that it comes in at six percent. I think often I get very excited, and my tiny five foot seven, one hundred and thirty pound frame can only handle so much, you know, dipa. So like to just be a nice, like you said, a single uh, regular IPA. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, I could drink this all day. Awesome. Well, Dancing Gnome wins, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but we still have two more beers to go, and that means we have two more segments to go. Which so, means we need to take a break. Right. So we'll be right back. Check this out. There's a Seattle company called Devor that enables discovery of new and exciting beers and breweries. Devor gets the best independent beer from literally around the world. Denmark, New Zealand, Belgium, and of course, everywhere in the U.S. The app is incredibly simple to use to get some ridiculously good beers delivered right to your door. And right now, anyone who signs up with the code HOPNATION can save $10 off their order of over $25. That's T-A-V-O-U-R dot com, Tavor. Welcome back, Hop Nation. We're here with episode 72 of the Hop Nation USA podcast, and we're sitting in with the guys from Porter Brewery Tours, and we're ready for our second beer. That's right. Uh, just so for those that are keeping track at home, since this is episode 72, this is the Patrick Hornquist episode. Uh, so congratulations to him. They're, uh, they're hockey players. Oh, I understand. I was, just trying, to figure, I was trying to remember what number was Mean Joe Green. When no, he's 75. 75. 75. We'll get so there. So next three episodes <laughs> from now. Oh, boy. Be patient. That's right. Hank, do you want to call in three episodes from now? <laughs> I will. I will. Just give me the number. And I'll say, wow, thanks, Adam and Steve. <laughs> I hope we'll you're enjoying you your Mean Joe Green episode. <laughs> then we'll throw you a t-shirt. <laughs> All right. Hey, you kid. All right. So, Adam, would you like to introduce the second beer of the evening? Would I? Absolutely, I would, actually. Uh, so, this is another Pittsburgh staple. Uh, you may know them from their previous name, Dry Log, but this year they changed their name to Strange Roots uh, Experimental Ales. And what we are drinking tonight is the Grand Bleu, uh, or Bleu, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Francais? Uh, C'est bleu, oui. Uh, uh, Grand Bleu. Uh, there are umlauts on the top. Yeah, so. that's Flemish, <laughs> Maybe it's, maybe it's oh, uh, German. Maybe it's German. Flemish. Flemish. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. Look Flemish. I'm assuming it might be a Belgian if it's a Grand. So, uh, yeah. Bleu. Uh, uh, Grand Bleu. So we're all wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, the nice thing about the Grand Bleu is that it has nothing to do with blueberries or anything blue. Uh, it's actually made with peaches. All right. Uh, so this is one of their sour ales. This is a collaboration with a uh, another local Pittsburgh business, House of a Thousand Brews. They've got a couple locations around Pittsburgh. And if you want some hardcore numbers, ABV, 8.1, IBU. Don't know. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a sour. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we should take a look at this. This kind of has a, uh, I would say, orange juice tang kind of look to it. Yeah, it, it definitely looks a little bit lighter than Sunny D. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, effervescence, not much. Not much in the way of head. Yeah, the head dissipated pretty quickly after I poured it. Fairly non-existent. Uh, if you want to get in on the nose, uh, you don't even have to get close to it to know that it's going to be a sour beer. Yeah. Which I am a fan of. That's yeah, I get, I. I get sour fruit right away. Yeah, yeah, and I am all about that. Uh, and mm. just so you know, it was also aged in French oak cask, so... We'll right back at you with the French. <laughs> it's all, it's full circle. We'll bring you right back in. Mm -mm, merci. <laughs> <laughs> so there is nothing left to do except for try this beer. So toss my arm. Gentlemen. Cheers. Oh, that's yeah. perfect. Oh, that's good. Yep. What a balance. Yep. So well balanced. Yeah, those guys, they definitely know what they're doing. No doubt about it. 
I, uh, I'm a fan of this one. Uh, this one is a, a bit of a redemption tour from the first one. Um, for two reasons. One, I like this one a lot more. Uh, two, uh, this is not the style that Steve likes, so he's got to... Yes, we've give the the explanation. <laughs> we, we've uh, we flipped seats. Adam, not a fan of IPAs. I'm not usually a fan of sours. However, caveat to this is, Drylock has always been my favorite sour producer in that they are so experimental. And I, I believe Adam already said it that it, other Adam, not you, Adam, but this Adam. <laughs> they can't see which one you're pointing at. I know Maybe the French Adam. Adam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> French Adam, Porter Adam, Porter Adam, Porter. <laughs> Adam too because he has two A's. <laughs> but you already said that like they're so, they're good at making everything well balanced, and that's that's exactly what I love about Drylock now. Strange Strange Roots is that every sour I've had from them is so balanced; it's never overpowering with the sour flavors, which is what always turns me off. It doesn't punch you in the mouth. No, and it's similar to the way I get the punch in the mouth with IPAs. Yeah, th- this is there is a bit of a sour. Sourness to it, but it's a slow climb to that you know peak of sour flavor. But it's still it's still good. It is a bit acidic on the tongue mm-hmm. right away. But again, uh, just like just like the beer before it, I, I I think I could probably tell you exactly where it was from. With my eyes closed. <laughs> they uh, they are masters of what they do. Absolutely, and, and they have been since the first day that we went. Though a funny thing about the sours, uh, at least for me. Uh, before we started, like I said, we were not beer connoisseurs, my brother and I. And as we traveled around going to, at the time, much more limited group of breweries around town, um, I had never even had one before. I didn't know anything about it and still had a, a fairly basic knowledge of beer overall. And uh, we went to Dry Log. They were very nice. They let us try everything, treated us like kings. And I hated it. <laughs> I, 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 I looked over at my brother. I took my first drink. I looked over at him and I said, it tastes like a shoe. <laughs> all, all, uh, all, <laughs> I, uh, all respect to dry lug. And I love you guys uh, dearly. Um, but you have completely changed my palate for beers over the time that we've been doing this job. And now I am, uh, a, a yeah, fanatic for the sours, and that is the place that I go. How, how are you with shoes these days? Um, much more uh, open, I open think, than I used right. to be. Okay. Yeah. Well, now that shoe brew has opened up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the nice things about Pittsburgh is there are some of those niche breweries here. Uh, it's not just you know guys and gals making just good beer, but there are good beers in certain directions. You have our sear, there are sours, you have the New England style IPAs, the hazies. You have those styles that are that are being highlighted in Pittsburgh that you don't necessarily see in, in other cities. And that's I, I find that particularly awesome. Plus you have Southern Tears, nice deserty boy pastry stouts, which oh, yeah. I love. <laughs> and you're even wearing uh you're wearing an Orox t-shirt today. Uh, that's true. Um, which is another real niche. That's it really is. niche, being that there's only seven uh True gluten-free yeah, true breweries. breweries. Yeah. In the I wanted to get States. that right. I wanted to get that right. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> really. Mm-hmm. Wow. Or are, are places like Leaning Cask, where if you're a big fan of English beers and right. Scotch ales, things mm-hmm. like that, there is something for everybody. And Cobble House with their old, their old world. And, and we it, were we were just uh, over there recently and just had a blast. Wonderful amazing. place. Mm-hmm. And the beer was amazing. Great variety, great room. Yeah, the vibe super is neat. Just nice staff. I mean, everything about it. I, I, I had never been until I went with Johnny and, and these guys and mm-hmm. loved it. Yeah, Scott was actually our first interview on the show. So, yeah. <laughs> From Cobble House? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. 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 Cobble House was the first uh, brewery we went to. So, yeah, definitely shout, shout out to It's just another great place with more great beer and, again, more great people to meet and spend yeah. time with. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, t- to bring it back to this, what's funny is the the day that I um, accepted, you know, this working with Porter, I, I was trained actually by Johnny, and, and the first brewery that Johnny and I went to on my ride along was Dry Lock, which is now Strange Roots, um, and I didn't know anything about it, and I showed up and just like you know, fresh face, like, hey, what's up? I'm I'm here to learn about the beer tour, and Johnny just did his thing and led the way and got everyone seated and got them their samples. Um, I think I did. I tried some of them, mm-hmm. and I didn't even know what to think because I never really had sour beer. It's similar to you guys. I've come full circle now, where I purposely go there. It's a mm-hmm. very easy bike ride from Lawrenceville. Um, 
you know, they have great hours, awesome staff. Brady and Jacqueline and Mark and Dennis and all of them have become good friends and just great partners for, for Porter. Awesome. So uh, just to jump in to what you said about how you never really had anything from them before, Johnny's already said that he wasn't a craft beer guy going into this. You weren't either, Adam? No. What's funny is, um, you know, before getting started with the guys here at Porter and um, and really living in Pittsburgh, I think the only craft beer that I had was probably in Athens, Ohio. We had Jackie O's. Okay. I'm not sure yep. if you guys heard of Jackie O's. I so. so I went to college at Ohio U and we had Jackie O's there in town. Uh, awesome. And then I had Bells out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. mostly just from traveling to Michigan with our track team and things like that. And, uh, you know, had Bells, had Jackios, and uh, yeah, man, that was about it, which is kind of embarrassing. And, <laughs> and now we're leading beer tours. <laughs> well, you, you also had one other thing that no other place had. What's the, that? The Jambulance. Oh, yeah, we did, yeah. The Jambulance. Before we go into the Jambulance, I want to hear about Hank's experience with beer. Funny you should ask, Johnny. Um, Actually, I did come into this gig as a dedicated craft beer geek. Um, I've been a a home brewer for many years, uh, so obviously you learn about beer that way and you're attracted to different styles and different things. I've been going to craft beer bars and craft breweries for over 20 years. Uh, I'm a beer writer, so I've been writing about beer for 20 years, so I will visit, a lot of times when I go out of town, I'll visit a brewery and crank out an article and sell that. Um, So, you know, I've met Larry Bell, I've met Jim Cook, I've met Burt Grant and and Fritz Maytag, and, you know, I've interviewed all these guys. I'm deep, deep, deep into craft beer, and and that's, you know, half the reason I got this gig, because, you know, I'm a beer geek. (laughs) <laughs> what was the other half? Uh, the other half is that I was for 19 years back in when we lived in New York, I was a volunteer firefighter and I could drive a fire truck. So I had a CDL. Uh-huh. I, I know about beer. I can drive a fire truck. I'm comfortable speaking in front of people. So the rest is history. We, we figured the we needed at least there. one person that knew anything about beer. <laughs> yeah. Before we go too much further, I just uh, I wanted to have, uh, give another shout out, of course, to my brother mm-hmm. uh, who couldn't be with here uh, and his mustache with us tonight, and his new mustache. We're all very proud of you. Congratulations. Uh, and also to Rachel, <laughs> yes. who, uh, who we couldn't do any of what we do uh, without her. And um, she uh, she was also a tour guide for a short time, and then uh, took over the um, the really important duties. Which is uh, booking our tours and oh, all of and, that. and all yeah. of the relationships that we have with all these different places. Uh, we couldn't have done any of the things that we've done without her. So, thank you, Rach. Take care. Rachel's the best. We'll have to give her a special shout out at some point in time on the Twitterverse. On the Twitterverse. <laughs> Do kids still say that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I ask you guys a question about this beer? Beer. This Grand Bleu. Um, I noticed in the in the uh, in the description, and I've noticed it on, at at the Strange Roots uh, place itself, that they mentioned that it's got um, a little Roquefort cheese in here. Not the cheese necessarily, but the bacteria yeah. that's used in uh, Roquefort for the Cave Age Blue cheese. Is anybody tasting that? I'm getting the that's where the spiciness blue is. is from. That's the spiciness, you think? Yeah, I think I think that's oh. kind of that uh, that that uh, that bite that bite that you I get. Know. I feel it back here. Yeah, bro. I believe that's actually what that's. I, yeah, I, I was, was, I was getting a little funk acid, but on here. Maybe. Could, yeah. That might be part of it too, but I think yeah, that that bite. I now that you just said that, I didn't know that was in the description, but that would explain it because I feel like that bacteria it causes that Roquefort to have that really. Bitey blue cheese. Which I love. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it pairs great. really well with wine. I'm not a wine guy, but it pairs really well with it. I think that's one of the cooler <laughs> things about what I've learned personally as we've gone to all these different places, talking to the brewmeisters, going to places like Full Pint, and them explaining to me the intricacies of the different beers that they make and the infusions and things like that. And oh, there's wild mushrooms and there's this and there's that. And it, it, it uh, for someone who didn't write about it <laughs> and didn't interview all those people whose names Probably didn't I'm drive a sure fire truck, are you? very important in the beer industry. Uh, <laughs> I found it extremely interesting and it's fun to be able to relay that to other people who for the most part the people on our tours, um, they vary, but I would say they, they probably know about as much as anybody else about this. And uh, and so we sound like really, you know, smart beer guys <laughs> on the tours, but, uh, but uh, I think we all learn a little bit together. Yeah. So you weren't impressed by my name dropping? 
I just assumed they were really important people. Yeah. <laughs> nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you made them all up. I did. You know, you know Fritz Maytag of the washing machines. <laughs> yeah, well, he is, actually. That's his family. I just hope none of them are listening because I, I'm I sure you're it. really good at what you do. Yeah. You've oh, probably yeah. never heard of me, so I mean, hey. <laughs> So let's bring this all right back together. Uh, the champions. We never got to that. Oh, oh boy. Yes. What Ooh. the devil is that? Happy to explain. Uh, Adam here again, <laughs> Porter. Uh, basically, the, the Jambulance is a um, ambulance <laughs> that has been converted uh, by a local radio station in Athens, Ohio. Uh, every year I try to go back for homecoming and it leaves out the band. Um, the Jambulance is often confused for an ambulance because it does have the same sirens, paint job, uh, markings, and all of that. So if you're ever out at a house party having a few beers with your buddies and you hear an ambulance, everybody looks up and says, oh my God, is that an ambulance or is it the Jambulance? <laughs> Brought to you by Q104 or whatever. Power, Power 105. Power 105. <laughs> but what an iconic... I'm going to break that out. We don't we don't advertise other radios. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, man, it's it's just something that stuck out in my mind from college and I shared that with these guys at Porter and we were out drinking one night and I was like, yeah, have you guys ever heard of the Jambulance? And they were just like, what are you talking just about too, just too much fun really it's pretty hype but it, it was a neat thing and it was a, it's a very niche sort of like cultural nuance of athens ohio we have the absolute best uh team building <laughs> uh, i think as in, you in can town. imagine I, mean, <laughs> I always thought it was research no. Okay. Uh, well, Andy, Andy, research. We're doing recon. Right. <laughs> Andy calls it quality assurance, and quality. in some ways it is. I mean, and for me, when I drank with these guys, and we thought, all right, let's go to, like you mentioned, Mindful, Spoonwood, Hitchhiker, some of these, like, further out from the city proper, mm -hmm. it was actually my first time at all three of those with you guys. Uh, and Hitchhiker, again, just to throw a name out there, talk about masters of their craft. They're right. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. We love you. Gary, if you're listening, <laughs> we you, love you to are... Call uh, just it, without reproach, I suppose. It seemed like as soon as they opened up their second location, just everything got turned up to 11. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two feet on the gas. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was already wonderful uh, right beforehand, but oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, they, they really know what they're doing and they yep. just keep pushing the envelope. And uh, I think I would hope that everybody else is really inspired by Mm -hmm. What they've done. The the cultured creature, the boysenberry beer. I don't know if you guys have tried that. But I haven't had that. No, it's incredible. And and yeah, like Johnny said, I you know mad mad respect and love for those guys. Awesome. We've talked about kind of your history and how you've gotten into things. I kind of want to know more about the beers you like and the beer styles you like. And I have a question for each of you to answer. If you were to put together your own brewery tour for yourself, private. You can invite friends, do whatever, but these are the breweries that you want to go to. Imagine you had a magical transport machine that gets you there so you can go all over the country, all over the world. Where would you go? Who would you visit? Putting you on the spot. Why don't you start? <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> go down well, I, I tell you what, maybe I'll start on the East Coast and and we'll try to go west from there, but I guess on the East Coast, the first place I would go would be Brooklyn Brewery uh, in the Williamsburg section. I've been there a few times and they make great beer and they've really done a nice job of, of inviting the community into their space and it's it's a very welcoming place and people have a great time and they learn a lot um, and then I'd have to go down to Rehoboth and go to Dogfish Head of course mm -hmm. um, nothing else needs to be said there right. <laughs> uh, but those, those would be my two east coast stops what about moving west fellas what would you think uh, I have a few in mind but do you have any uh, allegiance to Austin? Do you like Austin, Texas beer? Because they're none at all. Anything, <laughs> anything in the uh, in the Louisiana, New Orleans area? No, I don't know that. Area. I mean, I've been to New Orleans a few times, but or Denver. How about the West Coast? Oh well, Denver. Yeah, Denver. Um, well, certainly. I mean, uh, Fort Collins. You got to go to New Belgium, of course. Uh, and in Denver, I like I like Wincoop, which is you know one of the oldest uh, brew pubs uh, as in, in downtown Denver. It's an old railroad station. It's have any of you guys been there? No. It's it's beautiful. It's massive and it's kind of rustic and they make great beer. And, you know, one of the co-owners is John Hickenlooper, who's the current governor of California, who's just a great guy and a lot of fun. Um, but and I guess winding back, I would go to I don't, I don't want to skip over Great Lakes in Cleveland. 
Uh, I've been going there for many years and watching them expand. And, and in addition to making great beer, what they do in terms of sustainability is just off the charts. I mean, they're creating like a zero waste closed loop system with their with their restaurant. And, you know, they use their spent grains, go to a local farmers that grow the pigs that then get slaughtered and used in the in the recipes in the restaurant. And, and it's just it's amazing what they're doing there, and of course, it's all solar powered. And they use the they use the the water from cleaning the vessels, and they run it through pipes underneath the floors to provide heating. Which Cleveland, you know, right? You don't <laughs> need that. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, that, the that old is, lake effect. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. So um, then I, I guess I'd round it out with uh, Stone and in California and Rogue up in Oregon. In, in Oregon, that's that, so. That's my Rogue is terrific. dream yeah. trip. Yeah. yeah, the first first beer out of the norm I ever had was when I moved to Portland and had a Widmere Hefeweizen, and that was that, was, that, that sort of took me to that next level. Mm -hmm. Then now this was back in 1998, and of course, just like fashion and music and a whole bunch of other things. Everything starts at the coast. So, <laughs> so, so everything that's happening now in Pittsburgh happened in Portland in 2000. And uh, so, yeah, places like Whitmere, uh, of course, Henry Weinhardt. Weinhardt was always there and they've made amazing beers and even sodas and things like that out there for years. So. Yeah, and they're doing spirits is now uh, now as well. Yeah, so that, that, that was sort of my first real introduction back in the day. And honestly, even before that, I remember when some of the larger breweries um, in the early 90s were doing contests where they would find home brews in the, here in the States and they would have contests and then whoever won, they would produce that oh. beer lo you know, mm -hmm. out into mm -hmm. the country for a very short time. So there were things like... Oh, uh, that was the, the long shot competition, yeah, exactly. Boston Beer Day. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. And very cool. Great I remember yeah. trying, like, again, like being introduced to a whole different side of beer than I'd ever had. Now, of course, I was a college student, things like that. I mean, my, my beer definition was extremely limited. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the long shot competition, it, and, and that affected me and changed the way that I drank beer going forward because it introduced me to a whole bunch of different flavors and options that I never even thought possible. So that was me. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. I, I would say, I mean, with all due respect to Pittsburgh beer, if we had like a teleport machine and I could craft a quick route to hit a few breweries at any given time, I would start like Hank and I would start in New York, but I would go to KCBC, uh, the Kings County uh, Brewers Collective okay. in Brooklyn. I would start there. Uh, I, I met with them at Juicy Brews at the Ace this past March. Uh, super nice staff. They brought two of their hazies out. Very, very good. Super just like full body, just awesome beers. From there, I would teleport to Outer Range in uh, Frisco in Colorado. Outer Range brought a hazy to that same festival that was like taking your head and just like plowing it into a pillow. It was so <laughs> like soft and cloudy and just like such a well, and it, it speaks towards their expertise. Um, they ended up actually, I think, finishing second in that competition for uh, best new brewery in the United States after the one in Minneapolis, and then it went out of range, and then Dancing Gnome here in Pittsburgh. So that would be my second stop. And my third stop, I was asking Hank earlier about Austin because there were, I was in Austin about a month ago and I went to a few breweries and a few stand out in my mind. One was, uh, it's called Pint House. I'm not sure if you guys heard of Pint House. No. It's PHP, Pint House Pizza. So they make pizza and they make beer. And one of their brewers is a very good friend of mine from my hometown in Ohio. His name is Raphael. And I met with Raphael and we went back from the brewery and he was actually brewing that day. And he let me try a few things that were in the hopper, a few things that were done still conditioning, all of that. Um, it was awesome. They had a couple of beers that actually ended up winning a couple of awards, um, both kind of in the cloudy, hazy category. But um, that was awesome. And then the other one is actually talking about Strange Roots. Their version of that is called Blue Owl. And Blue Owl is in East Austin, and it's a sour brewery. And, dude, it, it was incredible. Um, you can get a four-pour tasting and keep your glass when you're done. Wow. So, of course, you know, my 
girlfriend and I did that. And, um, <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you? Just tried everything. You know? So you like, got like a whole cabinet full of these glasses. <laughs> yeah, right? So now we have all new glassware. <laughs> no, but yeah, it was awesome. So I would go, yeah, New York to Colorado to Austin and kind of hit hit those three. Can I, can I throw two more in the mix that I forgot? By yeah, all sure. means. Okay, in Colorado, in Denver, uh, actually inside Coors Field is the Sandlot Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's actually the test kitchen for Coors. Again, it's all the Coors Brewers, you know, when they want to try a recipe, try something funky and different, they do it and they they pour it at Sandlot. So here you have some of the world's greatest brewers. That's their that's their their fun. It's their yeah, right. it's their playtime. And yeah. they, they get funky with it and, and it's great fun. It's tiny, tiny little place. I mean, you know, just slightly bigger than this room. But Isn't that uh, where Blue Moon originated? I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was it was one of the first beers that came out. It was it wasn't even called Blue Moon. It was like just a Belgian wit or whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 And then I, I have to go to Hayward, California, which is in the Bay Area, to Buffalo Bill's Brew Pub, which is the second brew pub in California. It's been open for like 30 years or something. Uh, opened by a friend of mine named Bill Owens, um, one of the pioneers of craft brew in America. And the original pumpkin ale was, was hey, made there. Now that's in San Francisco? Just outside. It's in Hayward. I'm going to be there next week. You got to go. You should, you should hook <laughs> me up with some digits. I will. And, okay. and they make they make a, a white apple brick oven pizza that will melt your mind. Oh, I can't wait. We're going to hit Monterey. We're going to we'll be in San Francisco to start. And then so there you go. Yeah. All right. All right. I also want to give a shout out to Asheville, North Carolina. When Hank was talking, I thought about one that I left out. It's called Wedge. I don't okay. know if you guys heard of Wedge Brewing. Mm-hmm. I've been there about three or four times. A lot of my buddies that are getting married are having their bachelor parties down there. So we always end up in Asheville. We always end up in breweries. We usually end up in Sierra Nevada, Oscar Blues, all that. Yeah. But Wedge is located in like a bit of a lower part of Asheville, not up in the mountains, along the railroad tracks. They always have like awesome like live music, food, usually a food truck, um, great beer and a great vibe. So I, when Hank was mentioning his honorable mentions, my honorable mention is... <laughs> and and, and, and is correct place. me if I'm wrong, but isn't New Belgium opening their, their East Coast brewery right around there? I think they just did in Brevard, yeah, just outside okay. of Asheville. Pretty sweet. We're, cool. we're going to have to get going on this on this machine. Well, see, yeah, uh, as you said, Twitterverse at some point. <laughs> uh, all of that is uh-huh. just nice hashtags and ats that we can add to social posts. <laughs> To bring attention to the show. <laughs> See, I think that's it's, there it's you the go. New thing. You know, it used to be I want to hit all of the major league ballparks in right. my lifetime. Yeah. Now it's I want to hit every good microbrew across the country right, right. in my life. Well, that's yeah. a much more expansive list. Well, yeah. yeah. And it could take more than one life. <laughs> <And>, right. <laughs> You'll need a liver transplant along the way, too. <laughs> well, just tasters, of course. Of course. <laughs> just tasters. I mean, you hit it. We're connoisseurs, <laughs> not drinkers. It's a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's called a tasting, and it's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, finished all of our tastings with this uh, Strange Roots Grand Blue. Mm. It was very grand. It was Bang delicious. Yeah, it was awesome. But not very blue. Yeah. No, not at all. all. Well, not until Hank said something about we it. We have a little bit left if anybody would like some, but I believe all... Don't mind, mind if I do. Don't mind if I blew. Oh, nice. Thank you, Steve. Any Just final thoughts on this? I'll jump in on that action. I really liked it. That's all. I liked it as much as I've enjoyed every single one I've had there. They, they, it is amazing. It, Oops how they can keep going on that sort of thing. What I mean is they, they are some they started out as kind of a niche brewery, but they keep finding new sub niches, which is kind of a weird thing to say. But they keep expanding out and finding these new sours, these new experimental ales. And I, I, I enjoy keep going back to that. Well, I'm glad they changed the name to Experimental Ales. Well, yes. Because yeah. now they can really <laughs> yeah, now they push can, the envelope right? like they weren't before. Yeah, license to kill here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they Maybe. can rock it off with stouts and whatever else they want. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just go bananas. I'm sure there's bananas in some of their food. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. sure there's bananas. Sure. <laughs> and if not, we just gave them a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, again, I'm not the biggest sour fan, but I will say, yeah, I enjoyed this one. It's a, it, I don't know. It, there's just something about them. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. And it's not trying to be like a homer of uh, just rooting for the team. <laughs> but you're going to. I think they're just that good. Yeah, yeah. I just think that's they're what that I mean. Good. I just yeah. Don't think, yeah. yeah. Like one of my all time favorites from them and all time favorite sours is the Relic. That's made with that 
yeast that they found in a cabinet that was from 1881 or some shit like that. Yeah, like exactly. they, were, they were on vacation and they, yeah. it was oh, like back in the back of some cabinet and it yeah. still was. Yeah, I mean, you tell a story like that and then you drink it. Right. I mean, <laughs> come on. It's, <laughs> it's, that's already it's the definition right of there. courage. I mean, the first time that we went, we heard that story and then they put a, a uh, copy of like... Um, Beer Connoisseur magazine in front of us, and the guy on the cover was standing in front of us. <laughs> it was like, a little intimidating, yeah. but at the same time, it was wonderful. So, uh, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. You to, if you ever want to have a really interesting conversation, talk to Dennis from Strange Roots. He's brilliant. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever met. And I was out there about three weeks ago to actually do a photo shoot to shoot photos of Dennis and his team at the brewery in Gibsonia. Um, he's brilliant. He definitely knows what he's doing with the spontaneous fermentation stuff. Right on. And the beer definitely speaks for itself, so that's <laughs> yeah. bottom line. Yeah. All right. Well, that's two down, one to go. We're going to come back with a third segment. Hopefully, all the everything that they brought up with their brewery tours that they envisioned are going to help them with the game we're going to play in the third segment. There's only one way to find out. Be back. Welcome back to segment three of the Hop Nation USA podcast. It's episode 72, and we're here with the guys from Porter Brewery Tours, Adam, Johnny, and Hank. And they're uh, going to participate in a game I've devised, along with our Adam. Hello. Yes. Uh, But before we get to that, we're going to get to our third beer of the night. And the third beer tonight is coming from East End, and it's called the Eye Opener Coffee Porter. It's a 6.8% porter. It's going to be a dark beer, and it's actually made with uh, local coffee from Commonplace. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, Very nice. Very nice. Place. So, just out of curiosity, where did you get this beer? I got this beer from JR's. Nice. Because I got a big old crowler from them and their big giant crowler system. Hashtag JR's. Yeah. Oh, it's already there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Conveniently located where? Rochester, PA. That's and, oh, okay. <laughs> Conveni- convenience kind of a loose. <laughs> <laughs> they are the hidden gem of Beaver County. They are. They in, really are. In that they have an amazing mix and match. They have just an amazing selection overall. And they have a crowler system. Oh, wow. That, nice. that features a lot of local and like stuff you can't find. They almost always have a pizza boy on. They've been featuring um, soul artists. Artisans out of um, Easton, PA. Yeah, it's awesome. worth the stop in. Yeah. yeah, it's worth the stop in just to check it out. It's Especially JR's. Yeah, yeah, JR's Beer Warehouse. Especially if you're kind of also on the way from Pittsburgh to Vintage Estates. I know that's a pilgrimage sometimes for people, so they can go get their zombie dust and other things. <laughs> uh, but JR's is kind of on the way, so yeah, stop And there. not only that, if you need to buy uh, Swedish fish in five pound bags, they got them too. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, get you know, beer, just, just the other day. <laughs> I, I've been looking for a spot to get that. Well, have I got a solution for you. <laughs> they got it. They also have home brewing supplies. Yes. They are a one-stop shop for basically me. Yeah. <laughs> Candy, beer, and beer making supplies. <laughs> done, done, and done. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, but back to the, the eye opener. Uh, since this is a porter, this is definitely a switch up from the other two that we had. Not that they were similar by any stretch of the imagination. We we certainly have a menagerie of beers tonight. Definitely. But I think in this style, you and I can both agree. So we're, we're not flipping any scripts. No, no. This is definitely in both of our wheelhouses. Yeah. Uh, looking at it, it looks like a porter. Mm-hmm. We, we usually skip the looks when it comes to dark beers. Right. <laughs> the, the only thing you can give them is is the head. It's a it's an off white. Yeah, this yeah. one's actually more of a tan. Yeah, it looks like a porter, but it smells like a coffee. That was mm. nice. That's yeah, a very nice aroma. Yeah, it, it's yeah. very uh, brown, mm-hmm. and, and it feels like there's a bit of a vanilla kick in there as well. Well, we'll see. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely like a roastiness in that nose. And shout oh. out to Commonplace too. They make great coffee. Mm-hmm. I know yes, that they do. East End has a really good relationship with those guys and I, I love that they're collaborating. I don't know if you guys saw 11th Hours working with La Prima on a beer okay. right now. So it's great to see these local collabs happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, Couch works with Zeke's typically. Oh, dope. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I mean, yep. Excellent beer, excellent coffee. And I think uh, Merchant Oyster works with uh, Eleven hours. Hour. Yes, they do. Oh, they're 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 yeah. 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 Way yeah. to go. So many, uh, so many local yeah. synergy. Yeah. <laughs> synergy. Yeah. Also, full pint 
they work with uh, Black Forge from time to time, don't they? Yeah, damn, yeah. you're right. I forgot. Yeah, because I was, I was just thinking of the Brutal Beer Fest. They had a collaboration there. Yep. Just then, shout outs galore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is so indicative of Pittsburgh. All these right. like, collabs we're all thinking of. On the taste, though, this beer is pretty fantastic. Mm, I really can't disagree. I think this one, this one is a winner all around. This is this is a really good beer. Really good. It's oh. so creamy. So I I know for the listeners that can't see this right now, but I, I've still got a nice small like head on mine, and it's mm-hmm. it's uh as I swirl it, it's leaving a nice sort of glisten. It's like a dessert beer. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. What I like about it is it does have that roastiness, but it's not overpowering by any stretch of the imagination, and it kind of gets out of the way. You have that roastiness, and then it goes away. A little piece of cake right next to me with this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I love tiramisu. I love the mouthfeel. There you go. It's, it's very creamy, very smooth, and the finish is really nice. The coffee really comes through in the finish. Yep. Yeah. One of the things I've noticed, it, a lot of times porters can feel a bit thin. Uh, this is not that. Not at all. This, yeah, is, yeah. this is like velvet. Yep. Yeah, yeah like Adam Porter already said, this is very creamy. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well done. Good yeah. job, East End. Yeah. Good job. Woo woo. <laughs> well, we like those guys a lot. A lot. Oh, Good gosh. relationship. Yeah. Excellent beer. Great staff. Wonderful tours. Yeah. Almost uh, anytime I'm heading from our tour to a party or someone's house, I'll try to plan such that I can go back and grab some cans or a growler. <laughs> and I'm usually finding myself at East End, at Couch, at Full Pint, you know, the folks that distribute and just pick up some stuff. And East End has been awesome to mm-hmm. just hook us up and, and get us set up with the right beers. I don't know if we've been lucky or if it's just one of those things, but yeah, the, the places that we have relationships with. Just great people, great beer, and wonderful atmospheres. I mean, couch, geez. How can it get better than laying on a couch and punching Bob <laughs> Ross while drinking a wonderful beer? I mean, it's heaven. Play a little bingo. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing is a lot of these places, uh, yes, they're a brewery, so they, they have something in common, but they are also unique in their own way. Uh, you look at you look at even you know Grist House. Uh, they have that nice open space right next to the creek. Uh, and you have couch. Obviously, we've talked about them before. They've got oodles of couches. Eleventh uh, hour. They they kind of have that that depot set up uh, with a nice big window out windows, front, which I very think is fantastic. Open. Uh, each place has their own personality, and that's something that would definitely come out in your tours as well. Certainly, uh, mindful the sort of ultra modern yep look at Spoonwood is is more of a it, it it feels more just like a restaurant, but the way that they pair their beers with the food, uh, that's something where I hadn't seen that before we had gone there. Uh, the way that other places had, had paired wines with their yeah. food, they, they really think about what's going to taste good with this. And they'll tell you, those, you know, the, this one's a little spicy. It's going to go really well with our Mexican dish and da-da-da-da-da. And it, it's... Yeah, they do a good job. Yeah, they definitely design their beers in mind of their food and vice versa. No. But like they'll design, you know, they, I know they have special meals from there time to time. Well, you, and, and you've also got a place like Voodoo, right. where uh, just a great, just a great place to hang out. Yeah. A great big room, a bunch of board games, things like that. It was one of the first places that my brother and I went when we sort of started this whole idea that I, I think that was one of the first places, if not the first place that we went to just sort of get a feel for what was happening around right. town. And, What's out there. Yeah. And they, it, it was sort of like, that was the setup. Mm-hmm. That place sort of launched us into everywhere else. So. Yeah. And, and then you got Abjuration, which is in a movie theater. <laughs> right. <laughs> like. I love our insurrection. You know, you walk in and you're sort of like, wait a second. I thought I was at a brewery. Right. Oh, I have to go downstairs. <laughs> okay. Now I'm in the bar. Okay. This works well. But if you come from the other side, you know, you come from the alley side, you just Right, you're just in it. Right. Right. I mean, and while we're giving shout outs, I mean, shout out to Cinderlands as well for pairing up a stellar beer program with a stellar food program. I mean, those guys, I love when I have out of town guests visit Pittsburgh. That's a great spot to sort of hit both Pittsburgh food and Pittsburgh beer in one setting. Yeah, great atmosphere. And the food was. They're incredible. Their Japanese rose saison, I think it was, was mm-hmm. insane. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was so good. Yeah. It was like <laughs> drinking a edible flower. Yeah, we didn't want to stop drinking. Yeah, it. I felt but like I was back in the you know. It felt like a hummingbird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, did, what did I get to eat? Was it like a sloppy Joe or something? Yeah, you just, did. Oh my gosh, yeah. I, I still can like taste okay. it. <laughs> it's the sloppy Joe. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Yeah. good enough. I, everyone enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's time to play a game, you guys. All right, here we go. 
I've designed something for the three of you and Adam. Hello. <laughs> uh, we Adam's have our ringer. <laughs> we have three brewery tour guides and one Eagle Scout. Hello. So two. Two. Oh, 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 all right then. I would never have guessed. Surprise. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> Point being, we've got a lot of navigation experience among the group, which is going to help you guys because you're on the Oregon Trail. Oh, we're yes. going to die of dysentery, aren't we? That's just what I was yeah. going to say. Yeah. That's, I knew it would get me. Is this, is this like Donner Party stuff here? Like, I don't think I made it that dark, no. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, the worst thing that'll happen is you'll wind up at Budweiser. But. <laughs> <laughs> so you did go that dark. <laughs> I guess I did. You did die of dysentery. Uh, the way this is going to work is I have set up an, a fake ale trail okay. from here, Pittsburgh, all the way to Oregon. Oh. I'm going to give you choices in which direction you go. And you, as navigators and tour guides, are meant to pick the closest and most efficient route. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So, just this, and I'm going to let each of you throw an answer out there. If you get it wrong... You've died of dysentery. <laughs> uh, or the grip. It's very yes. dark. <laughs> so you guys can play as a group, or if you can offer dissenting opinions, if any of you can make it to Oregon, you win. So, this okay. so like we can talk amongst ourselves. Oh, yeah, you can totally okay. talk amongst okay. yourselves. Okay. Yeah. Pittsburgh yeah. collaboration. Here we go. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Right. But you all have to give your own answer. If you find yourselves dissenting among the group, feel free to break away from the pack, and you might actually survive. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. There's a strategy <laughs> here. All right. Right. I'm yeah. about to be deceased. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So we're starting in Pittsburgh, PA. Your tour is meant to go to a one of two breweries with the name Dog in it. Are you going to go to Brew Dog or Flying Dog? Isn't Brew Dog a chain? Flying Dog is in. I think it's in Colorado, isn't it? It's got all those Ralph Steadman uh, illustrations. Adam, you know. Seems like it seems like a, a far stretch. I thought it, it was seems Delver. pretty. Far. It's a, it's a dogfish head. That's a that's dogfish. A yeah. True. Yeah. Okay. That's, that was the okay. first one I thought. All it was right. Dogfish. I, I'm I'm going to give a pause because you guys are going some da dangerous routes. I'm going to right. make this a little easier. Brew Dog is a chain. Uh, originated in Scotland, but they have a, a brewery open in Columbus, Ohio. Flying Dog, uh, you're right about the illustrations, Hank, um, but they are in Frederick, Maryland. Originally, though? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay, though. It's just yeah. the exact opposite direction of what you said. It's yeah. the scenic route. <laughs> <laughs> I get points for Ralph Stedman. Right? That, yes, 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 definitely points for that. Hank, if, if Flying Dog is in Frederick and Brew Dog is in Columbus, Frederick is definitely closer. I promise you that. You, you got my vote. Because Columbus, from where we're sitting, is three hours. It's on I-70. Mm -hmm. Frederick's about... About an hour 45. Well... So wait, no, but if we're trying to get no. to Oregon... That's what uh, oh, we're, we are trying to get to Oregon, right, Steve? Not necessarily. Okay. Well, no, well then we have to go to Columbus. Yeah. 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 How did yeah. we do? That only took 10 minutes. I'm not going to be this generous in the in the future choices. But yes. Yeah. Wait, you're not going to tell us exactly the answer? <laughs> that doesn't seem fair. Uh, but yes, you would, from Pittsburgh, going to Oregon, you would go to BrewDog. BrewDog is only 186 miles from Pittsburgh. Fred, uh, Flying Dog in Frederick, Maryland is actually 202 miles. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. We're all dead. And, and, we're, we're, and we're heading in the right direction. You are headed in the, right, are headed direction. In the right direction. So you're off on the trail, uh, grueling pace. <laughs> yeah, I could use a beer. I don't As know a <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> all right. You guys have made it to Columbus, Ohio. Ray. Moving on to your next destination. You are either going to head to Three Floyds or you're going to head to Sheboygan Brewing. Which I only bring up because I wanted to say Sheboygan. Sheboygan. Three Floyds. <laughs> Three Floyds is in Indiana. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and we know Sheboygan is in the mid. That's right. It's Thank not. you for pointing to your hand. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that. So, so, Sheboygan is not in So Indiana. if we're in Ohio. And we're going to Oregon. We're going to Oregon. I think we probably go to Indiana. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go north if we don't have to. I would, I would go to Indiana. Okay, so so we're down with three Floyds. Adam, you good with that? I mean, yeah, I'm good with that. And not only that, since you guys are IPA drinkers, 
Uh, they also also have the zombie dust. So even if we've gone the wrong way, you've gone the right way. way. I, I love their Scottish ale. It's uh, I think Robert the Bruce or I haven't had that one. Oh, like, oh. So are we all in agreement? I, let's make that? this happen. Okay, all in agreement. Yeah. All four across the board. As going to three boys. Like three three boys. Yeah. And you are correct. You're still on the right trail. Nailed it. Heading to Three Floyds. Uh, Sheboygan is, as Adam pointed, Adam Porter pointed on his hand, is actually at the top of the mitten, so that it serves you no purpose to drive all, <laughs> all 453 miles up north. <laughs> as fun as the UP is. All right, so that means you've made it to Three Floyds, and you're enjoying your zombie dust and possibly trying to secure bottles of Dark Lord. Yeah. Possibly, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I like the positive Robert attitude. Robert the Bruce, the Scottish <laughs> <laughs> Where are the sours? Come on, get the rest of us. <laughs> Unfortunately, you've hit a hitch in the road, <laughs> and you've been forced to divert your party to one of the two, uh, I would say, macro traders. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're going to a trader post in Chicago. You're either headed to the Goose Island Brew House or Lagunitas. Well, Goose Island's definitely in Chicago. Correct. Is that the question? Yeah, but I don't know where Lagunitas is. Lagunitas is California. Yeah. Well, that's quite a jump. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think California is closer to Oregon than Chicago. But is the question which one is based in Chicago? The question isn't which one is based in Chicago. Which one are we going to? Yeah, the question is which one is closest. No, which no. one is closest? Oh, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Goose Island. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think. Are you sure Lagunitas is in California? I, I, you know, I say with 82 percent certainty. I'll back you up on the other 18. Okay. Okay. Well, we're gonna go with Goose Island. And then your travels all the way up to Goose Island, you've all caught dysentery. <laughs> oh, no. And we're wrong. I didn't even really? see the warning symptoms. Wait, it's not in Sheboygan, is it? No. Uh, Lagunitas is home-based in California, but they have tap rooms around the country, including Chicago. Oh, sons of bitches. And your closest one from Three Floyds is Lagunitas. Really? Yes. Uh, you didn't say tap rooms were part of the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Point of order. I'd like to. With, I'd like to withdraw my dysentery. <laughs> it's not fatal. It's we not all. fatal. <laughs> Be, being that all of you caught it, it's not fatal. You'll find a way through. <laughs> yeah. So I feel that we should like roll for resurrection because this feels like, kind of like a D. &D yeah, because I think you've got, <laughs> you've got this whole game worked out. You might as well go through. Is there it. is there a possibility oh, yeah, that we could go to a brewery in Canada? <laughs> we could get some socialized medicine. We get fixed. <laughs> we come back. Jump back. Yeah. Don't spend the time. Y'all, y'all take a trip up the the Popper's Brewery and get undickered. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you know, damn. <laughs> you find your way undickered, and you find yourself all the way back down to Lagunitas <laughs> from Chicago. You're headed to Colorado, but on your way, you're going to make a halfway stop. Are you stopping at Brickway in Omaha, Nebraska, or Jackson Street Brewing in Sioux City, Iowa? Okay, so I used to live in Sioux City. Well, Sioux City is north of Omaha. Yeah. But we're coming from Chicago. Because, dude, South Sioux is in Nebraska. You know, North Sioux is in South Dakota, Sioux is in Iowa, South Sioux, Omaha, all Omaha is definitely... South, because it's like no question. No, we question. want we want to stay north because we're in Chicago and we're going to Oregon. You're on your way to Colorado, though. Oh, well, then we're definitely going the, to Omaha. Yeah, we want to go in Nebraska. Yeah, I, I, I wave to your like, expertise, right? Yeah, so you're gonna go like down. Go so. this part. Sounds like Johnny's pretty locked in on going to Brickway in Omaha. Uh, that's my guess, but that's just me. I'm I mean, with John. You Everybody's gonna stick with agree with Johnny. Yeah, Adam, we're all dead. Yeah. I'll back him up. <laughs> all right. And you guys are on your way to Colorado. All right. As Omaha, as Johnny correctly pointed out, is south of Sioux City and it lies on Route 80, which continues a much more straighter line than heading north into Sioux City and then back down. This is intense. That's the end of my hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From Broadway, you refresh and you find yourselves back on the trail and you wind up in Fort Collins, Colorado. The Napa Valley of beers. And you find yourself at Funkworks. The Premier Sour Brewery. From Funkworks, though, you have to make another detour. And you're going to find yourself at one of the macros. Are you headed towards the Miller Coors Head Distribution Center? Or are you going to the Budweiser Brewery Experience? Okay, Miller Coors is in Golden, Colorado. That's up in the mountains. That's just outside of Denver. In the mountains in Colorado. Yeah, Colorado <laughs> Colorado Springs is just north of Denver, but 
not quite into the. Wait a minute. Am I thinking Fort Collins? Yeah, Collins. You're in Fort, is, you're in Fort, Fort Collins. Collins is no, Fort North Collins North. is not in the mountains. It's it's just at the very eastern edge of the Rockies. Correct. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. Golden, Colorado can't be terribly far from there. And the Budweiser was the other one. Where's right? Budweiser? I don't know. I mean, they, I they, they brew at like nine different places around oh, the country. Really? Mm -hmm. So did Budweiser have manufacturing in Colorado? You're, you're talking about a brewery, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not I, a tap room again. No, no, time, not right? a tap room. No, 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 no it's no, tap room. Tap room no, no, <laughs> no, we're, ta we're talking oh, both man. macros have breweries. Oh, golden is. <sighs> I can't, I Which one's know. closest I, to Funk I turned to Hank for this. I, I just, Golden's not very far no, from No, it's Funk maybe Works. an hour. And I have no idea where the Anheuser-Busch thing would be. I'm, I'm willing to stick to, with, we're gonna have to with go Golden. Golden then. Yeah. I mean, for just like a knowledge. You sure nobody wants to dissent? Yes, because I'm pretty sure that this is just for chaos. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with you. Yeah, you're, you're trying to disrupt our elections. I'm going with Budweiser. <laughs> All right, Johnny's changed his vote. I'm, I'm sticking with Adam Gold Porter. Colorado. Adam Porter, are you going Colorado? I'm going to go Miller Coors because I, I trust Hank. Okay. So, uh, Hank and the two Adams, you guys have been bitten by a snake. <laughs> oh, dang, this hurts. As you're correct that, uh, you know, Miller Coors is in Golden, Colorado, and it's only about an hour or so away from Fort Collins. However, the Budweiser Brewery is five miles from Funk Works. And just down the street. Yes. Are you serious? Absolutely. Staying alive. Budweiser's Staying alive. Brewery is in Fort Collins, Colorado. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm going to put your ass on Who does he think they are? And uh, New Belgium is in Fort Collins, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. New Belgium. Yeah. A lot of places. You know, I would have gotten away from that snake had it not been for the dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> that does limit your range of motion. All right. So I guess you're on your own there, Trailblazer. I'm going by myself. Let's go. All right, Johnny. You're on your way to... Carry this to the end? Are you ready? Uh, no, there's okay. absolutely All no right. way that's going to Okay. <laughs> so from Fort Collins. <laughs> I'm dragging, I'm I'm dead, dragging dude. his almost dead body <laughs> behind me, and, he, and Adam's holding onto his ankle. <laughs> he's, he's, he's dead too. I'm slogging along. They're not quite dead. They have well, dysentery, dead, yeah. and they've been bitten by snakes. You didn't say they were dead. Well, hopefully you can find them some help in your next stop. Barely hanging on. As you're headed your way into Nevada, home to some fine gambling casinos, as well as breweries. So what you're wanting to do is stop at one of the two major gambling cities in Nevada, Reno or Las Vegas. On your trip, you can find yourself at the Brewer's Cabinet in Reno or Sin City Brewing in Las Vegas. And our final destination is still? Your final destination is still Oregon. We're definitely going to Las Vegas then. Wait. Wait. What? Yeah, it's north of Reno. It's, no, it's, no, it's, it's the other way. Reno's but it's way west. west. Las Vegas is at the very southern tip yeah, of dude, Vegas Nevada. Vegas is at the bottom. Like, I, it's wait, still west. Where, you're coming I mean, from Budweiser? You're going from Fort Collins well, I've, to I've, Nevada I mean, on your way to Oregon. I've actually driven from Reno to Oregon. So, yes, it's, it, it is further north. It's not as far west as Vegas, but it, Vegas is more south. I will say Reno. Wait, let's run it by Adam. This Adam. <laughs> Non-Porter Adam, okay. Non-Porter Adam has some Las Vegas experience. Yes, that I remember. <laughs> you, you think we should go through Reno? Dude? I believe Reno is correct because Reno is right on the border with California as well. It's like, like Nevada is at the top, isn't Which it? Which is it's like it's in northern Northeast. California because it's right near Lake Tahoe. Yeah. It's further, it is further north, but it's not as west. But uh, we'll go with Reno. And you're right. Going to Reno is actually better for your trip to Oregon, being that it is much farther north. <laughs> it, it does share a border with, I mean, it's pretty close to the border with Oregon, and Las Vegas is way down south by Arizona. This is your final stop. I'm going to give you four breweries. You tell me which one is the closest Oregonian brewery. From Reno? From Reno. Oh boy. Your choices are Mount Shasta Brewing, Etna Brewing, Deschutes Brewing, or edge brewing. Deschutes. Deschutes is. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Deschutes in Oregon? It is. Okay. Yeah, you're looking there for the a, closest. There is, a, there is a beautiful Deschutes brewery sign in the city of Portland that is famous. Yes, I've seen it. Oregon <laughs> famous. I'm going to go with Deschutes. What are the three? You well, said well, Edna, Deschutes. Portland is pretty far, but it is in Oregon. Well, all, all four <laughs> of them are in Oregon. I, I'm just. I'm, right, man, I'm, it's I'm just throwing it's something. Out. I'm, look, I'm, I'm, you're, you're I'm snake. Welcome. I'm snake bit. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. If you're I'm, more than welcome to no, make no, a guess. No, 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 no. So everybody's in agreement. You're you're headed to Dishits. Totally. We're, we're not saying which one's the best. 
Yeah, you're you're looking for the closest Oregonian brewery from Rio. Oof. Oh, oh from Rio. Mm, yeah. Mm. At the well, it's certainly were, not Portland. Then. Your four, your four <laughs> choices were Mount Shasta Brewing, Etna Brewing, Deschutes, and Edge Brewing. See, that's what I'm saying. Deschutes is on the coast, yeah, correct? Yeah. So there's got to be something in there. Yeah, because like Maybe. Edge and uh, like, dude, isn't Mount Shasta in that area? I'm gonna go Etna. Are you just saying that? <laughs> I, it's just my, it's my best guess. Go with your gut. It's my best guess. You're at you're at your final leg. You're free to uh, pull away <laughs> and try to drag yourself <laughs> elsewhere with your dysentery and snake bites. Listen, if he's going down, I'm going down with him. All right. Yeah. Team. That's right. All right. Well, then you've all died. <laughs> <laughs> God. Well, I was dragging two dead bodies with me. <laughs> the right answer. It's really only a matter of time, wasn't it? <laughs> The Schutz is actually in Oregon. None of the other ones are. What? See, that was my first <laughs> guess. You guys dragged me away from the first your, guess. Your closest Dang. Oregonian brewery that is the, the Schutz. That was the first thing I said because it was the only Oregon brewery I knew. Right. Uh, Come Edna. on, you dead guys. Thanks a lot. I would have lived if I'd been alone. Etna and Mount Shasta actually are closer to Reno, but they're in California, and Edge is in Ohio, Idaho. Which oh, is neither close nor. I should have followed me. <laughs> I had wow. it. I had it. I'm sorry. I, I was suffering from fever. You didn't follow the one yeah. person that's lived in the state. Totally. Well, and you you went with us. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you started. You know, it's fake news. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like, like, speaking with authority. authority. Yeah. Like, well, I shouldn't have looked at Facebook. I should have just gone with my gut. <laughs> Well, that's unfortunate, but you know, you all went down together, so I guess there's something proud to be about that. I don't know. We can put up a, we can put up a plaque. Yeah, yeah sure. there's hey, going to be a marker. Somewhere. We all oh, yeah. died in Reno. <laughs> yes, you all died. You not all died first, in Reno. Certainly not the last. <laughs> yeah. Good game. You guys tried your best. Wow, that was the participation ribbon. <laughs> you tried your best. You didn't make it. What Enjoy am I supposed to do? <laughs> Clap my hands for you? This isn't, this isn't an everybody gets a ribbon show. <laughs> so, uh, Steve, what's the consolation prize? Uh, the consolation prize is that you made it all the way to Reno. <laughs> you, you, got, you got that That's far. Bad. Reno's not so bad. Pretty good. Consolation prize is that you were the first ones to run this. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, trailblazers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if it gets turned into a board game, you know, there will be a marker. Royalties. Royalties. There, there will be a marker specially for you guys in Reno. <laughs> the, the, port, the Porter Tours Monument. It'll be called the Reno Trail, yeah. not the Oregon Trail. <laughs> But coming back to East End, all the way back in Pittsburgh, uh, we have the Eye Opener Coffee Porter. Any final thoughts on this? Uh, I just wanted to say I really like this beer. I like the fact that it's not very sweet, although it is very creamy. I completely agree. This is uh, definitely in the drinkable uh, over many, many beers category. Yeah. Yeah, especially being that it's only 6.8%. Mm -hmm. It's it's not going to bend you too bad. <laughs> right. It's not quite in the crushable category, as no. Dennis would fo so famously say. Yes, yes. Uh, but it is definitely one that you can enjoy more than one of. Yeah. I still want my piece of cake with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a piece of cake or a tiramisu. Anything that would go with that is mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah. A little, something sweet with it. But the yeah. coffee is it, its a perfect little balance. Yeah. Very tasty. Maybe a donut. Yeah. yeah. Beer and donuts. Yeah. Yeah. The Homer yeah. Simpson diet. Next yeah. time, beer and donuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Really Double good. foods cake donut. Mm. That's what makes sense to me. <laughs> so I think it's time we get to the hard part. All right. So for oh. <laughs> wait a minute, what was the Oregon Trail? Harder than dysentery. <laughs> uh, so at the end of every episode, we like to take the three beers that we drank on the show and rank them bronze, silver, and gold against each other. Shows like this, it doesn't really matter though, because I think all three beers that we had tonight were pretty good. It's just for fun, and yeah. basically based on your style and preference, I'll let uh, any one of the Porter guys go first. Hey guys, Adam here. Um, man, uh, only based on my styles, man, this is it's tough because all three were really good. So thank, thanks guys for bringing in the East End and the, and the uh, Strange Roots. Yeah, thanks for the uh, pounce. Absolutely, yeah. So I, I'm gonna go um, actually bronze with the one we just had, which was the um, the porter from East End. I, I love porters and I love dark beers, but I actually love them in the winter, and it's like August right now. <laughs> yeah. So I have to give a little bit of pushback, even though I know that it was like a really good way to finish the night. Uh, the coffee porter from East End bronze, uh, silver. I would actually just we're going like reverse chronologically. I'm gonna go Strange Roots. Love their sours. 
and they literally do no wrong. All their stuff is great, but I absolutely love Dancing Gnome. Uh, so I would go gold to the pounce. Um, you know, when I was there Sunday and I was thinking about what to get, you know, for you guys and for tonight, um, yeah, that really stood out in my mind. Uh, and they weren't uh, growler-ing lustrous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that would be my bronze, silver, gold. You mean one of the four lustras that they <laughs> were getting rid of? <laughs> they were all incredible. That double is something else. I'm interested in the triple. I doubt I'll find it. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to try it, but yeah. Hank? Okay, um, this is tricky, and again, this is a little uh, uh, style prejudice. Uh, so I have to go the bronze to the Strange Roots Grand Bleu, and uh, a very close uh, silver to the eye opener. Uh, a very drinkable, very delicious beer. And I agree with Adam, I'm, I'm going gold with the pounce. Uh, like I said, I'll be dreaming about that beer tonight. Uh, I personally, I'm going to go in the order that I would drink them as the evening progressed. I would start with the Strange Roots because the Sours are my favorite um, and it's a little lighter, good place to start. Uh, before I've had the meal, food comes, I'm going to pick up my, uh, my Dancing Gnome to drink with my meal and then uh, after the meal, sort of like having a nice port, I'm going to pick up my East End and have my little coffee drink, kind of pick me up a little bit at the end of the night. It's a little heavier. Uh, that's, I think that's the way I'm going to rank them, right there. Gold, silver, bronze. Right on. Uh, for myself, uh, for the bronze medal position, I am going to put the Pounce by Dancing Gnome there, uh, as mentioned by the other guys here tonight. That's simply down to style preference. In terms of execution, yeah, it's there. Uh, they execute it very, very well. The only problem is, is me. Uh, <laughs> Operator <laughs> error. Right, exactly. Uh, it's simply a matter of it is not my style, and uh, I've made peace with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, in the silver and gold medal position, I'll be perfectly honest, that comes down to what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, because these are both really good beers, and I could put either of those in either position based on what kind of mood I'm in or what I kind of want to drink that night. Um, but for tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the strange roots in the silver silver metal position. It's a really good beer. I really like that beer. It's good. It's it's sour without being obnoxious. Uh, it's a very good drinkable beer. Um, but I just got to put that eye opener in the gold medal position tonight. It it was really good It in terms of a coffee porter. It's really drinkable without getting into the thin side of things, which I know a lot of beers tend to do. This one had that good mouthfeel, as Hank said earlier. Uh, it's really good. It, it is probably the one that I could drink the most of tonight. Uh, honestly, between Strange Roots and East End, it could go either way. Uh, but tonight, I'm going with that eye opener. Tomorrow could have been something completely different. <laughs> Well, there you go. Steve, uh, you're, you're, it's your turn to back clean up. What do you got? So uh, I'm going to agree with Hank and go with the uh, Strange Roots and Bronze. I really like that beer, and I actually agree with the way Johnny put them together for a meal. I think I think the Strange Roots is a good way to kick off a meal rather than just having like a fruit plate. If that can be your appetizer. <laughs> Towards the end, there was a bit of that flocculation that came together in my glass. And that's when I really got that bitey Roquefort, you know, mm -hmm. uh, cheese. Like, it, it just had that bite to it. And, you know, sours in general aren't my style to begin with. So, still a really good beer, and I would drink it again. But something has to be bronze. <laughs> <laughs> Silver, uh, I'm going to give to the East End. I really, really like this beer. Like Adam said, if Adam Porter said, if it wasn't so goddamn hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> totally. You know, this, this is anytime fall or winter or second winter in Pittsburgh. That's what this beer is for. <laughs> like, it's really good for that. It's just we're in the summer right now, so it can't be that. Uh, and so gold is going to go to the pound by Dancing Gnome. I really like this beer. I loved it when I had it at Beers of the Bird. I loved it again tonight. It's just such a perfect representation of what a New England IPA can be. And yeah, th that's all there is to it. So I'm going to turn it back over to the guys from Porter, and they're going to give us all their social media plugs, events, anything they want to talk up. It's open mic. Sure, I'll jump in. Um, I mean, obviously, Porter.Tours, if you want to book a tour with us, uh, and we hope you, you do. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get there because I've got a tour this Saturday, but the Fresh Fest 
is happening at, at what, where's, what's the name of the place? Uh, the Nova Place. Yep. Nova Place. Nova Place. I'll be there. It looks, yeah, it looks really good. I yeah, mean, yeah. for one thing, they've got a, a gazillion collaboration beers, including, I believe, with the three breweries we, we had mm -hmm. here tonight. They all have collaboration beers, which I find really interesting because it's a unique opportunity to drink something that you probably are not going to encounter again. Again, I have a tour. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it, but that looks like it'll be a good event. Um, I don't know. On a personal level, uh, check out the Facebook page of Henry and Hudson. That's uh, my partner and I. We do a, a little sketch comedy uh, thing there. So uh, check that out. That's a personal plug. Sorry. Hey, that's quite <laughs> all right. That's okay. All right. Yeah. That's kosher. All right. Yeah. That, that's all I got. What do you think, guys? Go yeah. for it, Adam. All right, cool. Yeah, I'd be happy to give a few shout outs. So, I want to give a shout out also to um, Fresh Fest. So, Mike Potter, Dave Bracey, Ed, all, all the guys over there. Um, I'll be there. Uh, I'll actually be there with a Porter bus, um, just kind of hanging out, uh, handing out some swag, chilling, um, hyping up our brand. Um, so, major thank you to those guys. Uh, you can follow Porter Tours on social media. It's, uh, as uh, Hank mentioned, it's porter.tours. Um, you can also check out, I want to give a shout out to Kenny. Uh, Kenny runs Hop Culture magazine. I'm not sure if you guys follow. Kenny's a good friend of mine. He started Hop Culture here in Pittsburgh before he moved to New York. And he's kind of grown and exploded that into his digital presence. Um, they're coming into Pittsburgh at the end of September on the 29th to throw a uh, Juicy Brew Festival at Dancing Gnome. Um, so that, cool. that should be really fun. Shout out to those guys. Shout out to the guys also at Breweries in PA, Matt and uh, Chad. Uh, they, they've been really good to us, um, digitally speaking, giving us a lot of love, hyping us up, writing about us, uh, directing folks towards us for the brewery tour. So thank you to Breweries in PA for what they do here in Pennsylvania. Uh, shout out to uh, Jaron, actually, at Craft Beer Industry Podcast, who had me representing Porter about uh, two months ago. Uh, first time being on a podcast, now tonight, second time. Um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, thank you to Craft Pittsburgh Magazine. Thank you to Debbie Stuber um, with all of her efforts there. Thank you to um, Libations Week. So Jason Sircone from Breaking Brews is throwing PGH Pittsburgh Libations Week in October. Uh, I think I'll let him kind of talk through that. Um, but if you're out there and you're interested in learning more about some of the collaborations, both on the beer side and the cocktail side, um, they're doing that. I'm giving a lot of shout outs here, so I'll, I'll just stop. <laughs> you know, if Adam ever wins an Oscar, he's going to be in great shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? And, and shout out to, uh, well, there's a, a group of journalists at The Incline. So The Incline here in Pittsburgh is targeting young people and uh, they're digital only and they've done a, just a fantastic job. Uh, Roslyn and Colin and MB and, and their whole staff has given us a lot of love. They awarded us with a Pittsburgh Tourism Award a few months back in May, which was super nice of them to look to Porter as a, um, a leader in tourism here in the area. Um, so thank you for their write-up. Thank you to Chris Tanieri for riding along and doing a write-up on, on Porter Tours. I could go all day, so I'll just stop. But the, you know, a lot of good, a lot of love to give, and a lot of shout outs to give. And of course, thank you to all of our brewery partners for letting us roll in with a bus full of people every weekend and help them experience your breweries for the first time. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, no, I don't think you had a prepared list like that. I did not. <laughs> no, no, I, I was waiting for the orchestra to start playing. <laughs> <laughs> He's being played off stage. Thank you, you know, Thank uh, you, you know, Hank, this is edited, and that could be in post production. <laughs> Actually, just to tag a couple things that Adam said and Hank said, we'll actually, um, I will actually be at uh, Fresh Fest and I'll be helping out with Dennis, who you've heard as a co host on this show a couple times. We'll be at the First Sip Brew Box table and he'll also be at the Allegheny City Brewing Tent because you know, that's where the collaboration happened between the two of them. And uh, Adam also mentioned Pittsburgh Libations Week with Jason Sircone. You can look for an episode with him, he'll be coming back on the show. So that's what I have for that. If you want to find us on social media, all you have to do is search Hop Nation USA, and that'll get you Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want to listen to brand new episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast every Friday, all you have to do is search Hop Nation USA on Stitcher, Podbean, iTunes, Google, Google Music, Music Play. Yeah, you can tell your Alexa to uh, you know find us. She's she'll get us. We're on TuneIn on that. We're on everything. But if you're on iTunes, leave us a five-star review because... We are a six-star show, but they only let us use five. That ain't right. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a damn shame. It's cheap. <laughs> it's a scam. <laughs> Uh, But iTunes is still one of the biggest platforms to find podcasts on, and by doing that, that's how you help our show grow. But also just tell a friend, and that'll really help our show grow. Anything else, Adam? No, I just want to thank the guys from from Porter Tours. Thanks for being on the show. This is a lot of fun. Thank you, man. Uh, Yes, great. Greatly appreciate it. That's, That's all I have. I'm just glad we were here and had a good time. Amen. All right. Well, that's episode 72 in the books. We'll see you next week with something else. 